עוד עשרים שניות נתחיל. Shalom, shalom everyone and welcome to the first session of Tarbut Time. Can you hear me well? Yes? Okay. Um, so um, my name is Eden. I am the program manager in the Department of Irgun in connection with Israelis abroad at the World Zionist Organization. I noticed that some of you already did it, but I would like to invite you to write in the chat, where are you from and where are you joining us from? I would love to see and uh, where are you from? So yeah, write in the chat. Uh, we are very proud to develop and offer Israel education and engagement programs to deepen the connection between the diaspora Jews and the Israel. From the Jerusalem, the department is being led by a member of the World Zionist Organization Executive Board, Mrs. Gusti Yushua Braverman. The department oversees Zionist federations around, around the world, connection with Israelis in the diaspora, and the Bialik Institute. Before we start, I would like to pass it to Yaniv Nechmias, the director of the department, to say a few things. Hi, thank you, Eden, and thank you, Naki, which we, we will meet in two seconds. Uh, I would like to thank Easy Israel Spring for partnering us on this session. I would also like to thank the Zionist Federation of Canada, the American Zionist Movement, the AZM, the Zionist Federation of UK and Ireland and the Zionist Federation of South Africa for being with us part of this session, as well as the many Jewish congregations from all over Canada and the US and even some congregations from Europe. I'm very happy. It's quite amazing to see over 100 participants from so many countries. It's actually heartwarming to see such, such a big numbers. This session is actually the opening session of Tabu Time. Uh, a world of bringing tabut, bringing culture, Israeli culture, and having great time together. It's uh, the beginning of, of a new series developed from the department. And in the next few weeks, and uh, I hope you got the flyer, and if no, after the session, you will get the flyer with the invitation to the different events. Every second week, we'll present you different sides or different aspects from the culture of Israel, from the music of Israel, actually speaking about Israel from a different perspective, ones that usually you don't hear about. So I hope you will enjoy the session and thank you, Eden, and again, Nati and Easy Stream Israel, thank you for partnering us on this great event. Thank you so much, Yaniv. Um, today we have a very special Mifgash. We have a privilege to host the creator of Israeli popular documentary film under the Iron Dome, Nati Dinar. Nati Dinar is one of the Keshet's founding team members back in 1993, and he helped to turn it into a commercial television powerhouse. Dinar then led a successful 20-year career across Israeli commercial television landscape. In 2012, Dinar started his own company, Dinar Productions, and created to, and produced a successful award-winning winning films and documentaries. Um, Nati, I want to pass it to you to say a few things if you want. Um, hi, everybody. First of all, thank you for having me. I want to thank the WZO for, for having this event and uh, starting this cooperation with EZ. I hope it's the first of many, many to come. Um, uh, and I don't know if uh, there's any members of EZ that uh, signed up for this. If you are a member of EZ, just let me know in the chat. We'll be very uh, happy to see you guys with us here. I want to start just acknowledging my partner in creating this series, Uri Baron, um, who not only uh, uh, created it with me, he directed the, um, the series. And I think with that, we can start. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe so much. later I want to say a few things about Easy, but let's start with Iron Dome and we'll talk about it later. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, we also want to encourage you to write questions in the chat as well. Uh, we are going to get to them in the Q&A section after a few questions uh, that we put in ourselves. And we're going to start with, why did you decide to make this series uh, about the Iron Dome, about this subject? Uh, well, 2015, I think, uh, I, my first film that I uh, did after leaving television, Savannah Hijacking, uh, was done. 
And I met somebody who told me, look, there's a great story about the Iron Dome development. You got to look into that story. Um, so I, I read a little bit. I heard about Danny Gold, uh, which if, if you watch the series or will watch the series, he's, he's the guy who initiated the whole uh, uh, process. And, um, and I, I, I reached out to him and met him. And I felt that I was meeting a real live superhero. A person that really, uh, uh, you know, superheroes, they don't really shoot fire or fly in the air, but superheroes, uh, living superheroes do amazing, amazing stuff. Um, and I felt he's that kind of guy. I was naive and thinking this should be done, you know, a feature film about Danny Gold's story with Matt Damon playing the part. Uh, but when I hit reality, I said, let's start uh, researching uh, this story and and through a documentary, that's the way I can gather information from multiple point of views of this uh, story. So that's actually how it started. I, I would start this with, let's see the beginning of the series and you know get into the real uh, filmmaking of, of the story. כשאני הגעתי לשדרות, שדרות הייתה ערת פיתוח, עדיין לא עיר, מקום קטן שכולם מכירים את כולם. מקום uh, כיפי, מקום חם. התגרשתי ללא ילדים והתחלתי לעבוד, לחסוך כסף, uh, והדבר היחידי שהיה לי בראש זה שאני רוצה ילד. באותה תקופה אם חד הורית זה היה... משהו עדיין לא פופולרי. לי זה לא היה אכפת, זה מה שרציתי. הכרתי את אבא של אפיק, את איציק, והחלטנו שאנחנו לא מתחתנים ולא... אנחנו מביאים ילד. ואפיק נולד. זה אושר שאי אפשר לתאר. בהתחלה התלבטתי, רציתי לקרוא לו תום. ואמרו לי, מה פתאום? היפוך של תום זה מוות. אז ירדתי מתום, ואפיק נבחר. איך אומרים תודה באנגלית? אמי. איך? תקי. תקי, נכון. ואיך אומרים? אני אוהבת אותך. תקי יו. איי? תקי יו. איי לאבי יו, נכון. אנחנו נמצאים בשכונה מ-3 בשדרות. איתנו נמצא ראש עיריית שדרות, אלי מויאל, שהגיע למקום הנפילה עם נעלי בית. הוא מתגורר ממש כאן, באחד הבתים. אלי, מה אתה שמעת בחמישה לשש? אני לא שמעתי, אני ראיתי במו עיניי את המרגמות נופלות, הפצצות של המרגמות נופלות, זה היה מחזה מדהים. אני קורא מפה... לאריק שרון, לפואד, לקבינט הביטחוני, הפתרון לא יהיה מקלטים והפתרון לא יהיה להתמגן. צריך שממשלת ישראל תוודא שלא יפלו מרגמות על שדרות. התגלגל הגולל, ובדיוק הייתי ראש העיר שם, ומי שהחליט, החליט להתחיל עם הקסאמים המצחיקים האלה. בהתחלה זה לא היה כל כך קסאמים, אבל לא חשוב. היה כל מיני מרגמות מטופשות כאלה וזה. שווה בנפשך, עיירה של 20 ומשהו אלף תושבים. In the middle of nowhere, נופל לך פגז בלי התראה, בלי שום דבר. So, why did you decide, Nati, to start the story in 2001? Uh, we know, probably most of you know, that Rockets has been fired to Israel since the 1960s. Why start then? Uh, well, as I said, it was, it was around, uh, I think, 2017 when we, we started really working on the project. Um, this is after the two wars with Gaza in 2012 and 2014. And Iron Dome is already successful. Everybody's talking about this uh, weapon system that saves lives, you know, uh, and, and we wanted to take people back to understand or remember Or, or, or even know, because people in Israel didn't know how people in Sderot lived. 
back in, the, in 2001 until 2003 when rockets uh, it could fall at any day, any time. It wasn't that it was like uh, tension times and there were rockets firing all the time. It would be just a normal day, people going to work and a rocket could fall from the sky. It was, it was terrifying, it's like sitting ducks and don't know when, when this is happening. And uh, we felt we wanna try to take people back at the beginning to understand this. And Afiko Hayon, which you saw the four-year-old, he's the first death casualty from a rocket. Um, and, and just to, to connect this with Danny Gold, when Danny Gold heard, heard about the, uh, the death of Afiko Hayon, that was the day he said, you know, this is startup nation, this is Israel, we gotta find a solution. Uh, he, he remembers the days from 1991 and the war with Iraq, where Israel was just sitting and waiting for, for rockets to fall. And he said, he's gotta initiate some thinking of how to solve this issue. So uh, that's, I think, why the reason we, we, we started uh, 2001. And um, thank you, Nazia. And what, what actually transpired and made the change? Since we know that that happened, what caused the change in developing that system? So, so um, just to remind us, in 2003, uh, a new government was, for, was formed. Uh, Ehud Olmert became uh, a prime minister. And he appointed Amir Peretz uh, from the Labor Party, the head of the Labor Party, to be Minister of Defense. Amir Peretz was said to be Minister of uh, Finance. Everybody knew that. He's a very uh, um, you know, social person. But uh, Ulmert wanted to keep the money close to him and gave Amir Peretz the opportunity to be Minister of Defense. He's, his army uh, record is very uh, limited. Um, and soon after, they formed the government, two things happened. One, Gilad Shalit was uh, kidnapped into Gaza and the Lebanon war started. And the second Lebanon war. In the second Lebanon war, uh, 4,000 rockets were fired at the northern part of Israel. Uh, people understood how uh, dangerous it is with rockets flying. There was no way to protect, uh, just you know, uh, attack Lebanon, Hezbollah and try to stop it. Um, but that doesn't make change. That uh, change only happens when something hits close to home. And, and let's see the second clip and see what it means close to home. בשורה של תקריות בעזה, הפלסטינים מדווחים על חמישה הרוגים, בסך הכל חמישים וחמישה מאז החל המבצע, וגם היום המשיך צה"ל בשורה של ניסיונות חיסול מן האוויר. הרקטות משגרות כתגובה על מעשה ישראלי. זה חשוב להם לראות שאם אתם מקים בנו, אנחנו גם כן מקים בכם. במטח שנורה אמש לעבר שדרות מפית חנון, נפצעו שני תושבים באורח קל, כשהרקטה נחתה בחצר בית בעיר. זו הסיבה שפרץ, מעבר לחיבוק שהוא נותן היום לכוחות בדרום הרצועה, אומר את הדברים הבאים. אנחנו צריכים לפעול במינון הנכון, בזמן הנכון, ואני בטוח שכך נעשה. עמיר המשיך לנהל את הלחימה מהקריה בתל אביב, אך בלילות היה שב לביתו בשדרות. ג'עברי, מפקד הזרוע הצבאית של החמאס, ראה בכך הזדמנות. הוא ניסה לדייק את הרקטות למטרה מסוימת אחת בתוך שדרות. באופן טבעי הבית שלי היה הבית המטווח ביותר באזור. מבחינת החמאס, להצליח לפגוע בבית שלי, זו הייתה החלטה אסטרטגית מבחינתם. תמונה כזו של ביתו של שר הביטחון הישראלי נפגע מטיל של החמאס, זה תמונת ניצחון גדולה מאוד מבחינתם. רקטות קסאם נורו הבוקר לעבר שדרות בזו אחר זו בהפרש של כמה דקות. באחד הימים טיל נופל כמה מצרים מהבית שלי, 
שכינה מהרחוב, ממול, שירדה במקרה לכיוון השביל, נהרגה, והמאבטח שלי, שבדיוק עשה סיור, נקטע אה... אותו שתי הרגליים. פטימה סלוצקר שעלתה ארצה לפני שלוש שנים עם בעלה, הותירה אחריה בעל ושני ילדים. פטימה שהובאה אחר הצהריים למנוחות בבית העלמין בשדרות, היא השישית מהרוגי הקסאם בעיר. ערב טוב, אנחנו פותחים בתיעוד נדיר של פגיעת קסאם מול המצלמה בזמן אמת. הקריאה צבע אדום נשמעה בשעה שמונה וחצי בבוקר. עובדי המפעל ידעו שזה יכול להיות עניין של שניות. מיד החלו לרוץ לחדר הקירור המוגן, יחסית. שימו לב כעת למרכז התמונה. מיד יגיע לכאן יעקב יעקובוב, עובד המפעל, וזה רגע הפגיעה. בצהריים הובא יעקב יעקובוב למנוחות בבית העלמין בשדרות. הוא הניח במותו אישה וארבעה ילדים. אני רוצה שתדעו שאבא שלכם הוא אחד הגיבורים, גם של שדרות וגם של מדינת ישראל. והקורבן שלו לא יהיה קורבן שאנחנו נעבור עליו. ואני חושב שאתה לא עשית כלום כדי למנוע את זה. ואני מרגיש כאב בלב. זה לא משאיר אותך אדיש. אתה פתאום מבין שהחיים שה... האלה צריכים להשתנות. ואני אמרתי, חברים יקרים, אנחנו בשום פנים ואופן לא יכולים לקבל זאת כאקסיומה, שהנה, אי אפשר להתמודד עם טילים קצרי טווח. אני דורש... שהנושא הזה יהיה נושא מרכזי בהתמודדות שלנו. Sorry everyone for the hard and difficult footage. I know I was very moved by that. Um, so um, parents made that decision, uh, but that was in 2007, I think. What happened since, after that? Well, actually nothing happened. Uh, parents made the decision, but nobody was taking it seriously. The army generals, they don't care about uh, defense. They want offense. They want to strike uh, at the other, uh, at the attacker. Uh, and they don't believe in defense uh, system back then. Uh, so nobody really uh, went along with Peretz's uh, demand. So nothing happened. What did happen is that El Barak won the primaries at the Labor Party. and came to Ulmert and said, I'm head of labor, so now I'm going to be uh, minister of defense instead of Peretz. And Peretz's seat was already shaking after the Lebanon war. And when Barak uh, came in, he was the real force in, uh, in, in pushing it uh, forward. Thank you. Um, so we know that eventually the Iron Dome was chosen. Um, what do you think that made it and proven it to make to be such a success that it is today? So I so will mention that uh, um, at the time Barack came in, there was a lot of uh, um, competition in trying to stop Iron Dome and maybe move to a, a different project with American laser. Uh, a lot of media played uh, in there. But eventually Barack uh, put his foot down and said uh, the laser system, won't be, uh, won't reach a solution. And he went and gambled on, uh, on Danny Gold and the Iron Dome and Rafael. Um, and he pushed them quickly to go and experiment and, and show an experiment. And I'll just tell a little story. When they went the first time to do the experiment, um, they fired a, 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 a rocket in the sky. And then they had the countdown to shoot the Iron Dome missile. Three, two, one. Press the button, nothing happened. Nothing happened. They said, what do we do? We fired another rocket, nothing happened. They went back, uh, thought that the Iron Dome is, is, is gone, it's done. If there's no uh, successful test, uh, Rafael people went back. They started to inquire to see what happened. Eventually came one of the workers there, came to the Hanoch Levin, who was the head of the development and said, I think I know what the problem is. There was a wire connected 
you know, X to Y and Y to X, and you thought that was the problem, they decided to go for a second test. And, and let's see a, a small scene from the second test, successful test. אנחנו משגרים קודם כל את המטרה, המטרה באוויר, מתחילה ספירה לאחור, קרוז שם, בחור בשם דורי, מתחיל לצפור. חמש, ארבע, שלוש, אחד, אין לו נפצצה, המרנק האחרון יצא. מזור המשגר, יוצא עשן, טיל מזנק לשמיים, כבר אנשים מוחאים כפיים, וחבר'ה, עוד לא היה אפילו יירוט. יש כאן מספר שניות של התקפי חרדה, כולם יושבים ככה. צפונים על המחשב. אנחנו קודם כל רצים לראות האם אנחנו רואים את הטיל, האם אנחנו רואים את הרקטה, האם העסק הזה מתנהג כמו שרצינו. התהליך הזה הוא תהליך עם מתח מטורף, אתה כל הזמן מסתכל שהמיירט נמצא באמת במסלול שתכננת אליו, וכל עוד הוא שם אז אתה מקווה שייווצר המפגש. <אז> בשלב מסוים רואים באוויר המון רסיסים, אחד פגש את השני, פוצץ אותו, השמחה שם באולם היא אדירה, אנשים קופצים, אנשים מתחבקים, מבינים שתקופה של קרוב לשנתיים הצליחה. כשזה פגע, היה באמת, כולנו קפצנו מהכיסאות והתחבקנו, זו הייתה הרגשה יוצאת מהכלל. שר הביטחון צפה היום בניסוי והודה לאלה שפיתחו בחברת רפאל ובאופן יוצא דופן גם למי שהחליט, קודמו בתפקיד עמיר פרץ. בלי ספק כיפת ברזל תהפוך בשנים הקרובות לחלק מיד המגן של צה"ל על התושבים ועל האזרחים באור וגם מטרות צבאיות. הם באמת עמדו ב... ביעד, לפי דעתי, בדיוק בזמן שנקבע, עשו ניסוי שהוכיח את ה... התכנות. ההתכנות הוא של משהו מדהים, זאת אומרת, אני מסתכל מתחילה טכנולוגית, שני חפצים עפים באוויר ב- במרחב עם שלושה ממדים במהירויות. בקיצור, זו בעיה מסובכת מאוד, והם הצליחו לפתור את זה, וזה הישג יוצא דופן. ואני אז הרמתי כוסיות וחגגתי. Okay, developing the system is okay, but uh, purchasing multiple batteries and thousands of missiles, um, that's a little more expensive. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how was it funded? Yes, yeah, so, so Eud Barak really put the first initial uh, um, tens of millions to get this development to a test, but uh, to develop the batteries, buy the missiles, and you need several batteries, and it was a plan that, you know, We can start with two, but two won't cover uh, not even the full uh, south of the country. So El Barak said, instead of uh, uh, working the politics and trying to get money here in Israel, he went to Uncle Sam and he sent his, uh, um, his people to talk with Uncle Sam. There's a nice story about this. In 2008, when uh, the new government uh, in the States got in, President Obama won the election. He appointed a guy named, a Jewish lawyer named Eric Lynn to be his person in the Pentagon. And the job he got as, as an advisor to the Middle East, um, uh, he met with uh, Benny Gantz. Back then he was the Israeli attache in Washington. And Benny Gantz was pushing a lot of projects and he told him, we need money for the Iron Dome. And um, Eric Lynn says he had a file on his uh, desk And on the file it says Iron Dome rejected because the U.S. rejected the idea of Iron Dome when it first was presented to them. And now what Barak says, you know, we got to get the money, go show the results of the test. And then he went back to Eric Lynn, showed him the test, and Eric Lynn would, became the, the promoter of Iron Dome within the Obama government. He went up the ladders until it got to, to Obama. And the deal was that uh, the U.S. will fund 10 million the 10 first batteries for uh, Israel, including the, the missiles uh, that were bought from uh, Raytheon. So the big money came from, uh, from the US. I think that we can see a scene about this uh, funding.
בכל אופן, ברק לא התעכב ודהר קדימה. הוא לחץ על גנץ לפנות שוב לאמריקאים, והפעם להושיט יד ולקבל דולרים. ברגע שהטיל הראשון ירד, זהו, זה כבר לא, זה לא אגדה, זה יכולת. ואתה מבין שעכשיו לא בלי טעויות, הדבר הזה יתקדם ויצליח, אין, אין שום ספק בזה בכלל. ג'נרל גנץ חזר לעוד חזרה בפנגון, ואמר, now that we know that this is very effective, we would like a U.S. support uh, for the Iron Dome system, and that gave us the uh, ammunition, no pun intended, to go further up uh, to the leadership uh, and take it to the White House, to President Obama himself. After the President's American government was the only one of them, the President of the United States, Barack Obama, who was not the only one of them who knew the problems of the United States. כי כבר ב-2008, עוד לפני שנבחר לנשיאות, הוא ביקר אצלנו. כן, כן, ממש אצלנו בשדרות. After Senator Obama won the nomination, he decided to do something very bold and a bit risky as a presidential candidate, and that was to take an international trip. He decided to visit Sderot, the main target of the rockets that Hamas was firing from Gaza. First, we visited a family in their home that had been destroyed by a rocket. They were in the home at the time it fell. Some of them were wounded. Uh, the home was completely gutted. There he had a chance to meet with a boy, uh, Osher Tuito, who had been wounded in a rocket attack, had actually lost part of his leg. The impact on Senator Obama was uh, very intense, very emotional. At that moment, he understood as a parent how terrifying it was to know that your children were not even safe in your own home. לפנות ערב בשדרות, מסיבת העיתונאים המרכזית של המועמד, מועברת בשידור ישיר בארצות הברית ואירופה. אמרתי לו, תגיד לי, מיסטר אובמה, מה היה קורה אם אתה יושב אצלך בבית, ב-11 בלילה, הילדות ישנות, אתה רואה טלוויזיה, ופתאום, in the middle of nowhere, נופל פגז על החדר של הילדות שלך. מה היית עושה? אתה יודע מי שולח את הפגז? אתה יודע את הכתובת שלו? אתה יודע את המרחק ממנו, אתה יודע הכל. מה היית עושה? הוא אמר לי באנגלית, I will kill them all. I bring to Sturot an unshakable commitment to Israel's security. The state of Israel faces determined enemies who seek its destruction. But it also has a friend and ally in the United States that will always stand by the people of Israel. אני מעריך שהביקור הזה השפיע על הצורה שאובמה מסתכל על כיפת ברזל. הייתה נכונות עמוקה מאוד לסייע שהתממשה למאות מיליוני דולרים. בית הנבחרים בוושינגטון אישר הלילה סיוע של 205 מיליון דולרים לצורך הצטיידות של ישראל בארבע סוללות של כיפת ברזל. Okay, so we have the funds and we have the system. Can you tell us more about the first time that the Iron Dome was actually used? So um, early 2011, uh, three years to the day that uh, the agreement was signed to, with Rafael to develop the system. And three years exactly is what Danny Gold predicted. Danny Gold said it will take three years exactly to make it, which is crazy because usually systems like this took, took 15 years to make. Um, it was deployed, it was, tensions were starting with, with uh, Gaza and, and everybody pushed to deploy the, the system into the field. I think it was February when they deployed it and, and were ready for, uh, for incoming rockets when they, when they come, but nobody knew. how uh, the system would react in real, uh, with real life rockets. Um, what initiated is, is um, uh, Eud Barak and Netanyahu, who was president at the time, uh, there, were firing, there were rockets fired from uh, Gaza and, um, and there were tension and, and Israel was not doing anything. It was like the government had a meeting and they came out of the meeting without a decision if to attack uh, Gaza or not. And Netanyahu the next day and Barak go to Amata Golan and they do some kind of media uh, uh, event with, with, uh, with all kinds of news reporters. But it was, it was actually 
to mislead Jabari, who is the head of uh, Hamas, to get out of his house. And when he got out of his house, uh, he was killed in, uh, with a hel helicopter strike. And that initiated um, uh, what eventually became the first rocket shot down by uh, uh, Iron Let's see the scene. Um, when, when actually what the, the revenge for Jabri's uh, uh, killing is uh, Hamas firing at a bus that was supposed to be full with full of, uh, teenage children. קצת אחרי שלוש, סמוך לנחל עוז. אוטובוס ההסעות הזה סופק פגיעה ישירה של טיל נגד טנקים בחלקו האחורי. התחילה מתקפת פצמ"רים. יש מתקפת פצמ"רים בגזרה. רק דקות ספורות קודם לכן ירדו מהאוטובוס הזה עשרות תלמידים מיישובי האזור. כך ניצלו חייהם. אבל הנהג שנפצע קל ואיתו נוסע נוסף, נער בן 16, נותרו באוטובוס. הנער תפונה במסוק לבית החולים סורוקה. משהו קרה לדניאל, האוטובוס שלו. We tried to call Daniel's cell phone. He didn't answer. ואמרתי לה, בוא ניסע, אני חושב כדאי לנסוע לראות מה קורה שם. אז היה לקחנו את האוטו והתחלתי לנסוע. ובאחרי עשר דקות רבע שעה לתוך הנסיעה, אני קיבלתי טלפון מהם בית חולים, שהמצב לא טוב. רופא שקיבל אותו, אמר שהוא הגיע במצב מאוד קשה. הם הצליחו לייצב את המצב שלו, ועכשיו הוא עובר, הוא עובר ניתוח אה, בראש. התגובה של צה"ל על הפגיעה באוטובוס ילדים אזרחי הייתה מהירה וקטלנית. גנץ הורה להפציץ בעזה. ביום החתונה, ב-7 לאפריל, מסתמן ש... שמתחיל איזשהו אירוע, ואז גם הטלפון אצלי מתחיל לצלצל, כולל לחבר'ה מהיחידה, שנורא היו רוצים להיות איתי, אבל הם נערכים, וזה נראה שהם לא יספיקו, שהם לא יספיקו להגיע. מההפגזות בעזה נהרגו שלושה פלסטינים ונפצעו ארבעה עשר, ביניהם גם ילדים. ג'אברי לא חיכה ועוד באותו הערב הגיב בירי רקטות לכיוון אשקלון. פעם ראשונה מופיעות מטרות על המסך, פעם ראשונה שאני רואה מטרה אמיתית. שהיא מגילוי מכ"ם ולא מסימולציה. אני מנחה את הצוות לשגר על המטרה. אנחנו רואים אותו במסך יוצא, והדבר הראשון שאני עושה זה מתקשר למפקד אתר השיגור לוודא שיצא טיל. ומפקד אתר השיגור עונה לי בצרחה שיצא טיל. צעקה מאוד גדולה, ערות מוצלח, תחושה מטורפת כי עשינו היסטוריה. מצד שני אתה כבר מבין שתכף אתה הולך לפגוש את המטרה הבאה ואתה צריך להיות מוכן אליה. אני מגיע לסוללה, אני פוגש את מאור שהולך לקראתי עם חיוך מאוד גדול. הוא מבין, ואני מבין, שבעצם יש פה היסטוריה קטנה. קיירות של טיל מיירט, של איום שחודר לארץ באמצעות טיל, זה לא קרה מעשית עד אותו רגע, זה קרה בספרים, זה קרה בניסויים המבצעיים, אבל זה לא באמת קרה אף פעם. עכשיו, זה דרמה. זה אירוע קטן, זה כמו שנניח אמר ארמסטרונג על הירח, צעד קטן לבן אדם, צעד גדול לאנושות. כול העירות של קסאם או גראד, אבל זה צעד גדול לתפיסת הביטחון של מדינת ישראל. So um, we know, most of us probably know that the Iron Dome was recently in the news, um, more connected to the funding. Can you update us a little bit about the, update, about the Iron Dome today? What is it used? What is the situation around it? Um, yeah, so um, the whole development, the Iron Dome, the Danny Gold initiative, he wanted to make a, a, a system that will always um, uh, learn from from uh, its uh, results and, and get better and will be able to change in time. So Iron Dome today, not, it, not that it's publicized, but Iron Dome not only 
can deal with ballistic rockets. It can, it can even deal with the uh, smart uh, targeted rockets. And it, it's probably became a very, very effective tool that wasn't tested yet, because until now it was only used against ballistic tools, uh, uh, missiles or rockets. Um, so that's that. Uh, and another thing is that as, as the conflicts with Gaza grew, the number of rockets became uh, just numbers that are hard to, to grasp. But the last time we had a, uh, the shooting, it, they were firing tens of rockets every time. And, and you know, that, that you need many, many uh, Tamir missiles to be ready for, for the next conflict. And especially if the northern border with the Hezbollah, where there's much, much more missiles ready and, and aiming at Israel. So it's very important after every uh, round that we have that we get uh, more missiles. The Obama administration, if you remember, just before uh, he left office, he uh, signed a deal for $38 billion of support for Israel for 10 years. But in that deal is that Israel buys the, uh, buys the missiles from Raytheon, the, the US company who develops them. But uh, again, funding is, is, if it comes from the Israeli budget, it's uh, very hard. And again, the US uh, stepped in. Um, so so uh, I don't think that more batteries were, were built. I think Israel still has 10 batteries, not more than that, um, which is, is enough to cover the country uh, when you move them around. But uh, I believe that eventually, Maybe there'll be development of more batteries, and, and uh, so we'll be fully protective in all borders if Chaz uh, Khalila war breaks out in uh, both regions, in the south and in, in the north. Thank you. Um, and now to conclude on a personal note more, um, before I want to open it up to Q&A from the chat and just a reminder, please submit your questions in the chat. We will go over them uh, very shortly. Um, can you tell us a little more about some of your next projects? Are they going to be connected to the IDF as well? Is there anything different going on? Well, it's true that the projects I made, uh, Savannah Hijacking and Rescue Bus 300, the latest one, The Longest Night, uh, which I hope will, will come to easy as well, they were all dealing with uh, IDF and security. Um, it's not it's not the path that that I chose. It's the path that eventually I, I walked through. Um, I've always wanted to do a, a romantic comedy. That'll be a lot more fun than, than these kind of stories. Um, but right now, I'm very concentrated in, uh, on Easy and and the streaming platform and getting Israeli content seen out there in the world. Because I think they tell different stories than the platforms we know as news. Um, so, and maybe hopefully one day uh, I will tell another uh, story through film or, or TV. I hope I get the chance to tell the Shimon Peres story, which I think is amazing when you go back and understand what this person did his life. By the way, the whole connection between Israel and the US to finding a, a solution for uh, incoming rockets was initiated by Shimon Peres and Bill Clinton in 1996. Uh, it eventually evolved into the Iron Dome. But at this point, I'm, I'm, I left the filmmaking for, for a while because I really believe that uh, we can enhance the world's relationship with Israel through easy and, and showcasing uh, the talent Israel has in filmmaking and storytelling uh, to the world. And um, so, so that's my focus. Thank you. Um, just as a reminder to everyone that is listening, um, the session is being recorded, so you are free to share it afterwards to everyone who registered only. Uh, we're going to send it and you are going to be able to watch it afterwards. Just a short reminder. Um, and now I want to open it up for some questions I received from chat. Um, the first question that I have is, how can you deliver the emotional trauma of being exposed to rockets, as we saw in your series, to those who never experienced it? Um, it, it it's not easy. What we tried, and for the people who did see the first episode, uh, as, as you wrote in the invitation, the first episode is free to watch on uh, Easy, so anybody who hasn't watched it, 
I think we had we had we were dealing Uri and I were how do we get people to understand uh, how what kind of fear it was and we understood we have to go and talk to the people and so it wasn't our first plan we didn't think we were thinking about telling the story about the development only when we understood it we have to go uh, to the south to the road and talk to those people and try through uh, the way we present the series at the beginning is is when the rocket falls it has to be a surprise to the viewer as well uh, when, so it is hard hard to watch but I think it's harder to uh, be a Sterot citizen back in the in the days and that's the only way we think we can try to convey through the screen the fear of of uh, living under this rocket threat day to day thank you um, one other question was, um, is there a potential development enhancement version for the Iron Dome um, with the technological advances? That is Karen and David asking. Um, well, yes, there's a, actually the whole plan of protecting Israel from rockets has three levels. The, the Iron Dome is for short range missiles, but there's also a, a David Sling that's for a, uh, for mid-range, and there's a, a, a system built for if there would be nuclear rockets fired from uh, Iran, so it can be intercepted either way up high in the sky or, or close to, to when they, they launch. So there is a full uh, protection dome for Israel system, but the only one that was really tested uh, in the field with real rockets is the Iron Dome. Hopefully it will stay that way. Uh, I, I don't want to try uh, to, to be at a point where we have to try to defend against long range missiles coming from Iran. But it is all the time in development. And as uh, Benny Gantz said, until Iron Dome, uh, the whole uh, uh, way the security Israeli, the IDF saw uh, the way to protect is, is attack the, the attacker uh, in his field and not developing defense system. And today there's defense system for the rockets and defense system for cyber and, and became all about uh, defense. And, and maybe the IDF will really live to its name, you know, is really defense forces and not the attack forces. So um, yes, that's all in development. Thank you, Nati. Uh, we have a concern question uh, from Sharon uh, from Sweden. Uh, she's asking, um, are you saying there's, are, there's not enough batteries if God forbid we are attacked in thousands of rockets from two or three borders at the same time? I, I can give uh, an accurate uh, answer to that. I can tell a story from uh, 2012, uh, the, the, the conflict with Gaza and the first time Amud Anan and rockets were fired. And there's a story we heard from the CEO of Rafael that uh, the chief of staff back then calls him during the firing and tells him we need more uh, missiles because they're, they're continuing to fire the, the rockets and there was no, uh, uh, no foreseeing an end to this. Uh, so he said, prepare more uh, missiles. And the CEO Rafael tells the chief of staff, well, we don't have more missiles. You have all, all that we have, we gave to the IDF. And, and there's a rumor that that was part of why the 2012 war ended very quickly. Um, are we, can we reach a point where we run out of missiles? I hope not, but, but if, if, there, if it's true that they say they have between 150,000 rockets uh, uh, to 200,000 ready in Lebanon uh, to fire at Israel, you can imagine the amount of uh, uh, Tamirs, Tamir missiles that we need. Thank you, Nati. Um, one more question uh, we have from Mandy in California. Does having the ability to uh, intercept rockets and missiles encourage Hamas to find other means of attack like kites and um, under um, creative efforts? 
Um, I don't know if the kites and the balloons are uh, came about because uh, Iredon can defend the missiles. That's um, I I think it's their way of you know disturbing the peace in the south uh, without the killing, because when when there's a, a real threat for life in Israel, then uh, Gaza gets bombarded very hard. Now, when there's a balloon flying over the border and starting a fire, there's a dilemma for the government. Nobody was killed. It was just fields being burned. It's true that, you know, uh, uh, they attacked us in, in some way, but uh, that's what happened. And then there's the dilemma. Do you fire back or not? So I don't think it's because we managed to stop the rockets. It's just another way, cheap way. Um, you don't need a... a you know, to smuggle rockets in, in, uh, under the ground. All you have to do is, you know, take a balloon, uh, um, tie some coal and send it over the fence. And, you know, who's gonna, what can you do with this when a 16 year old kid does that? Um, so I think that's the reason they did it. It puts Israel in a dilemma and a, and a hard place because it's, it's hard dealing with that situation. It's easier dealing with a real rocket attack, because then you have a le legitimacy to attack back. Yes. Um, so one last question before we have to conclude. Last question from the audience. Um, when will we have uh, easy in Israel? In Israel? <laughs> yes. Well, let me, let me use this time before we end to just tell a little bit about easy, because I don't know how many of our audience know about easy. And, and those who do and those who don't, we love for you to share this because we really, um, we're trying to do something new that, uh, that is, is, is possible because the digital, digital world uh, uh, the technology uh, allows this. And we, we license films from Israel and put them on a streaming platform, not different technology wise from, from Netflix. Um, and they're seen worldwide. The reason it's not available in Israel because the right the rights for the content produced in Israel within Israel uh, is taken by usually the TV station who who uh, funded it and uh, so we what we do we license the rights for worldwide distribution and we showcase it on Easy um, we've reached the thirty thousand uh, paid subscribers and we're growing very nicely. We always want more and more uh, people to join and spread the world because we really believe that uh, the talent Israel has, not only in filmmaking, we know this in, in high tech, we know that uh, in uh, food, we know that with music, um, the strength of the Israeli talent is growing in the world, the interest is growing, and, and Easy wants to be the gateway for the talent of Israel to get to the world and the gateway for the world to connect with Israel. We started now with doing it with, with content through the streaming platform. We want to grow to many, many other things uh, and other platforms. Um, so spreading the word of Easy is uh, great. Uh, the members of Easy who, are, who join us now, I saw a little bit in the chat, are, are enjoying the content we're uh, supplying. We're going to bring some very nice titles now in October. So. Um, yeah, and we can do this, uh, these kind of an events where people get to watch the content on the platform and then meet the filmmakers. We used me as the first uh, 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 experiment, but I'm um, sure in the next uh, Tabut meeting, we'll, we'll bring some great uh, Israeli talents and filmmakers. And, you know, maybe it'll be a little bit more interesting than just talking about the Armandone system. Yes, thank you so much, Nati. And I just want to conclude and say thank you um, to Busti, Yeshua Braverman, the head of the department from the WZO, who made it all possible. The people from the department, Yaniv and Lior and Ori, who helped us during this session. Uh, of course, thank you, Nati, for answering all, those, uh, all the questions that we had. Um, thank you, everyone here who participated and asked great questions in the chat. I want to thank the Canadian Zionist Federation, the American Zionist Movement, the Zionist Federation of United Kingdom in Ireland, South African Zionist Federation for partnering with us on this event. 
Um, and I also want to encourage you to watch all the episodes of this show if you haven't yet. Uh, we're going to add in the chat the link to watch it on easy, as Nati said. Um, and moving forward, we want just, to just one word, yeah. Eden. Yeah. Uh, first, I, I put my email in the chat if somebody wants to drop me a note. And um, for the next, uh, I think, week or two, we put all three episodes open free on the platform. So you don't even have to become a subscriber. It would be great if you do, but you can watch all the three episodes. We don't want to leave you without the full story. <laughs> Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for that. That's very important to say. So thank you. Um, and for the next sessions, I want to invite you to um, Telbu Time Session Television on November 2nd. It's going to be, uh, you can see it on the screen right now. It's going to be on this about the SIGD. Please notice the time because I know some of the countries are going to change to winter and some are not. So just pay attention to the hour. Um, and also, I'd like to invite you, we're going to add it in the chat as well. So please uh, look at the chat. We're gonna invite you as well to the next session, the Telbu Time music session. Um, you can see in the chat the link, um, which is a, another series within the Telbu Time series that is also gonna be focused on music, which is super fun and exciting. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us today. We hope to see you again. Have a good night, good morning, or a lovely afternoon from wherever you are. And we hope to see you.